I have totally been sleeping on Adobe's character animator. If you spend a lot of time on Twitch or other streaming networks, you've probably seen these really sophisticated animated characters that are fully lip sync. And you might also have wondered, how did they do this? Character animator, that's how. And I've kind of fallen in love with this program over the last few weeks, and I wanted to share some of my favorite features here with you. Obviously, you can see what we have here is the interface. The setup is a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. This is my laptop camera and over here in the corner we have my face and it is mapped and also my microphone is on and it's picking up my voice and it's taking that information and animating my character based on it. This isn't the first time I've tried Character Animator. When I started my other channel, which is an animated tutorial channel, I was playing with this app thinking, hey, maybe this could be a cool way to do animations for that channel. I was learning a few too many things at that time to really dive into this software and the, the voice sync up wasn't quite what I was looking for. So I, I put it off to the side. Also a little bit of background on that channel for those of you who are saying, hey, where did that go? It's been months since you posted a video. I know. I know, I totally understand. It is coming back, but we're still a few months away. I've decided to break things up into seasons. So season one was that learning how to draw a course. Season two, I've got some new tutorials that I'm working up, but don't expect those like in the next week or two. It takes it takes a long time to make these videos. I wanna kinda have a couple in the bag before I start rolling them out. So I'm looking at like August, September timeline. Season two, it is coming. It, I am working on it. And for season two, I did really wanna find a way to level up uh, the quality of these videos, especially the animation quality. And I'm thinking character creator might be the way to do it. So a few weeks ago, this video pops up in my YouTube recommended feed. Transcript based lip syncing Adobe character animated tutorial by OK Samurai. Now Dave of OK Samurai actually works on the character animator team. He's really passionate about this stuff and his channel is amazing. Definitely gonna be linking that down below. So go check that out when you're done watching this. So if you've seen my second channel, you know that my characters are not lip synced. In fact, they don't have mouths and that is on purpose because that takes so much time to go in frame by frame and do that. Adobe Animate, which is what I've used up till now to do those videos, has an auto lip sync feature and I had used it. I wasn't that impressed. It was just, it got me halfway there, but then there was still all that manual element of, of doing that. And I wanted to have videos come out on a fairly regular basis. And the only way to do that was to cut corners. What was interesting to me about this particular video was the word transcript. It wouldn't just be using my audio to do all this, but it would also be comparing it with the transcript. So it could figure out, hey, what's the pacing of this and, and what's the tone of this and create the lip syncing off of that. It's also gonna be grabbing the actual words and it's gonna understand that as well. So that was a big deal. So I'm gonna to get to those lip syncing features, but before I do wanna show off this app a little bit, there are these four tabs up here along the upper left. The very first one is your home tab. And what we have here are a whole bunch of characters that we can grab and pull into our project and play with. If you're brand new, it's kind of awesome just to pull some of these up and test them out and see what they do. And the second tab is the rig tab. This is where I'm actually defining how my puppet performs and what happens and how does it act. I'm gonna jump over to Photoshop for a second here what it's doing is it takes your Photoshop file. This also works with Illustrator files. And over here on the right hand side, I have all of my layers. And you're going to notice with these layers, they are all labeled. So my nose is labeled, my left eyebrow is labeled, my right eyebrow is labeled, I've got my hair, my eyes, I've got an entire folder over here just for my body elements. And when we jump back to Character Animator, what do I have over here on the left hand side? You guessed it, I've got my head, my nose, my left eyebrow, my right eyebrow. What's happening here is if you label your layers like that, over here on the right hand side, it says, hey, this is Brad's right eyebrow. I'm gonna highlight that right eyebrow. If you don't label your Photoshop file, that's fine. You can still pull it in and each one of those layers will be an element and I can actually go in there and manually tag them. Uh, for example, my right eye is clicked and I could just click on my right eye. If I wanna grab my uh, other pupil, I can grab that. I can map all of these things to my character. Of course, you're also noticing we have our mouth shapes. Down here, we have different angles. So as you move your head, you can actually create a rig uh, where you have the straight on view of your head and you can have different symbols or different layers uh, with your face angled in different ways. So as you turn your head, it's gonna show those different angles. Pretty cool stuff. Let's go to this next tab, which is the record tab. This is the tab we started on and this is where you're gonna be spending a lot of your time. So in the middle, we have our canvas. That's pretty obvious. Down below, uh, we have our timeline. I'm going to be talking about that more in a minute. 
Uh, over here on the left hand side, we have all of the assets that we're using for our project, which is the puppet itself and the audio files and anything else you import. And over here on the right side, we have our camera, our microphone set up. And down below is we have our puppet tracking behaviors. So I can go into any of these settings and I can change things around. If I think my eyeballs are moving around too much, I can lower that down a little bit so they don't kind of flap about too much. I could do that with lip syncing. I can do that with the face. I can go into all of these settings and just play around. There's also triggers. This is where it gets kind of interesting. Uh, you can set up trigger inputs. Uh, I can actually set up keyboard shortcuts. So if I wanted to, uh, I could like say, okay, I want my arms to go up th at this point when I press the space bar or something like that. So you can actually make your puppet move and animate. The other thing you're probably noticing with my particular puppet is I am using this parallax effect, so as I move my head, um, it also sways my puppet, and my hair's a little wonky, I've got to fix that, but I kind of liked the fact that my hair can kind of flap about, the more I flap, the more I break it, that's kind of fun, but for me, I think having my eyes and nose and mouth move just a tiny bit as I sway adds a lot to my character. And the last tab here is streaming. Uh, this is something I haven't used yet, but this is where you can take your character, add it to something. I'm assuming it would work with like OBS or some kind of streaming application that would allow you to put your character on the screen as an asset. That's what I've seen happen on Twitch a lot. So haven't played with that too much, but uh, pretty pretty cool stuff. All right, let's get to the stuff that I'm, I'm really excited about. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new scene here, and I'm just gonna hit record and you can see what happens. It's gonna count down. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. So it takes a second to render, but when it does, what it's done is it's created a recording. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. And it has created all of that lip syncing for me. Let me zoom in on that timeline a little bit. And down here, we have all of the letters that I am speaking. So you can see how my mouth is moving as this plays. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. That's actually pretty good. But what I find is as I talk more and get longer sentences, it gets less accurate. So here is another scene. And what I've done is I have my audio. I'm going to just go ahead and Hello, play my it. name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. And let's do this. I imported that WAV file. And then over here on the right-hand side, you actually see a place where I can come in and type my transcript. And, and that makes a big difference. So that audio is on my timeline and I could go up here to timeline and I can say compute lip sync take from audio and transcript. So I could do it from audio or I could do it from transcript. So I'm gonna go ahead and do audio and transcript. All right, that's set up. So I'm gonna go back here. All right, let me hit play. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals and let's do this. Now, maybe it's because that clip is short, but that seemed almost as good as the other clip. But in my experimenting, using the transcript with your audio is so much better. Let me play this one more time because there is one problem with this. Here, I'll hit play. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals and let's do this. The problem is, is my head isn't moving. So I'm losing uh, like the personality of my puppet when I do it that way. So do I go for accuracy or do I go for the action of the puppet? Like which one should I go for? Well, I don't have to choose. Let's go back to our original recording. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. We have our text already set up down here, but if I go up here to the left and I go to recordings, I'm gonna go to the recording I did today. And when I select it, I can then go over here to this side and I'm just gonna type in basically what I just said. Professionals, cool. Now that the transcript's in place, I can overdub this already animated piece and the only thing it's gonna replace is the actual mouthing of the text. So check this out. I go up to timeline and I say, compute lip sync from audio and transcript. And it's just gonna take a second to do that. And down here in my timeline, you can see the old transcript and you can also see the new one. So let's go back and play it from here. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. That is amazing. That is so good. Like, oh my gosh. Okay, so now all I have to do is hit record, record a line, paste in that line into my transcript, redo it, and so it's gonna take me a few seconds to do a line instead of like 10 or 15 minutes to go in and like do the lip syncing on a line. That is huge. Now, like I said, I still have to learn After Effects because this doesn't work with Adobe Animate, but I think I can figure that out. That's only gonna take me a couple days, hopefully, to get it to the point where I can do the same things. And it's going to save me days and days of labor. So I, I'm probably still gonna 
take weeks to make these things, but still I'll be able to dump my time into other parts to make it better. Anyway, that's why I'm excited about this. If you want to try it out, you're going to have to have the Creative Suite or try the, the trial. They don't sell this as a standalone. I think it comes with Adobe After Effects, but I'm not sure. You're probably going to have to pay for the whole Creative Suite to actually have it. Uh, but what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days. Bye.